All right, and this is our final section here for chapter 24. Uh, the last piece here, the biggest group, these are the insects. And insects really do play major roles in terrestrial environments. In fact, they're typically the bottom of the food chain for a lot of different food webs throughout there. So a couple of special features here, we're gonna look at the characteristics of insects. So these are things that all insects have. Eight major insect orders. We're gonna go through them in sort of rapid fire way, just so you have a good understanding. Many of these you've probably seen already. And then explain the positives and negatives as far as the impact insects have on human populations. So start with general characteristics, probably learned this already in first or second grade, but they all have three body parts, a head, a thorax, and an abdomen and then in addition they have three pairs of legs so they have three body parts six legs that's kind of an automatic for all insects um, some insects also have wings and you can see the wings on this particular insect here typically on the back they usually come off of the thorax for that part all these different characteristics of our insects you can see they again that abdominal cavity has a lot of the reproductive as well as digestive um, organs. The middle part, that thorax, where the legs come off, some muscle down here, as well as some nerve fiber, uh, the wings coming off the backside. And then in the head, you've got all the sensory organs, antenna, the eye. Um, there's a couple little feeling parts here on the mouth, um, the ocelli up here that kind of sense, sense um, smells and things like that. Uh, so that's the special features of all insects. Insects also have mal malphigian tubes. So the malphigian tubes, you can see right inside here, um, they have an extensive tracheal system. So this allows for air to move throughout their body, which allows them to be more efficient. The compound eye feature you can see here, this is a, a, the face of a fly. Remember, compound eyes are very important for noticing movement. And so many insects are indeed pests and or um, Oh, not prey, but I'm sorry, not predators, but prey. And so since they're prey, they have these compound eyes that allow them to see movement to escape. Insects have one pair of antennae, and you can see there's a variety of types of antennae. You've got these single antennae, you've got these big plumage antennae, but they have one pair. And they use their antennae to detect pheromones. Uh, here you can see a couple of different traps that allow us to catch insects if we need to, but these traps put out pheromones or special smells but insects typically use that for communication. And uh, there's honeybees here and the honeybees will go through a series of dances. We actually learned about that earlier this school year, watching those honeybees go through those different dances. Uh, insects can fly. So here's an image of a flying insect. And being that they're amazingly small, they don't need to be necessarily very uh, aerodynamic as it were. They, they kind of are able to move. So you can see here, as this fly is fluttering along, it's able to carry itself and keep moving because of the way it moves its wings. So you see here again, this is a little graphic and I'll link this in the description. Most insects have wings. There's a few individuals within maybe a colony that won't have wings, but for the most part, insects have wings. You can see a variety of wings here of different types of insects. And obviously the, uh, the wings do a lot of things for the insects. First off, they can help them find mates. So those with the biggest, most beautiful wings typically uh, find the best mates uh, that can allow them to escape danger. So here is uh, the eye spots of this particular butterfly allow it to look something like a larger predator. And so by wiggling its wings in and out, it may be able to scare something else off. Um, and then also to move to new habitat. So here you can see a whole bunch of grasshoppers and they move from place to place. Actually, one of the plagues of the Bible, the locust, uh, is a type of grasshopper, and that's kind of how they got from place to place. Now, insects are very, very diverse as far as how they eat. And so since they're very diverse, they have a variety of ways to eat. You've got some mouth parts that are good for sucking, some that are good for lapping, some that are good for chewing. So depending on what the food substance the insect is going to eat, its mouth parts are going to be adapted to do those things. Those mouth parts we call mandibles. And the mandibles can do handling food, it can bite food, it can chew food, it can maybe suck up nectar. Um, they also include digestive enzymes. So like this is a common housefly. When it lands on food, it will actually spit out this digestive enzyme that breaks down the food and then it will lap that food up. So it'd be in essence, like if you saw a cheeseburger, you would like 
vomit on the cheeseburger, your digestive juices would break it down, and then you'd take a straw and slurp that up. Pretty gross sounding, but that is how some of these insects feed. And they can eat just about anything. So this is uh, obviously eating some refuse here and getting their food. That's why there's so many insects. They can eat just about anything. When we talk about insects, we also need to touch on metamorphosis and how they go through their changes in life. So we've got incomplete and complete metamorphosis. An incomplete metamorphosis, like this grasshopper, they start off as an egg and then they turn into this tiny little, almost looks like an adult, but it's really small and we call it a nymph. <clears throat> and then the nymph will go through several moltings until it gets to be its adult size. So we call this uh, incomplete because it doesn't really change. There's not a big change. It just grows bigger and keeps molting until it's its adult. <clears throat> when we look at complete metamorphosis, this is a big change. We start with an egg, and then it goes to a larval stage, and then it goes to a pupil stage, and then the adult. And so each of these different stages also has a different kind of food. So in the larval stage, the organism is probably going to eat some kind of green leafy. In pupa, it's just uh, changing. This is where the metamorphosis actually happens. It changes from kind of this worm-looking organism to a flying butterfly. And then as an adult, this butterfly is going to eat a different food. It no longer eats these leaves, but instead it's going to suck nectar from different flowers. Going into diversity again, here's an image from the book. Um, there are many, <clears throat> many species, and these species inhabit nearly every habitat throughout the world. And so you can see these different orders and then family names of all these different kinds of insects. Insects typically are kind of rare in the ocean. We don't really find them in the ocean very often. Um, but this is the list that's over here. We've got beetles, moths and butterflies, just your regular old flies and mosquitoes, ants, bees and wasps, things that we call true bugs, um, things like the foot, leaf footed bug or uh, in the fall, we'll see box elder beetles. Those kind of fall in this bugs category. Crickets and grasshoppers, uh, dragonflies, damselflies, and then termites. And you can see the numbers of species. There's over 500,000 species of beetles, uh, 140,000 species of butterflies and moths. So there's lots and lots and lots of insects out there. They have a huge impact on our <clears throat> environment. First off, um, they can pollinate plants and that helps the plants to reproduce. So here's a short video and I'll link this video again in the description. <clears throat> but when the insects come in, they'll flutter around and in doing so, they'll be able to help move pollen from the male parts to the female parts of different flowers. And because of that, it allows for different kinds of crops to grow. Now you may have heard there's been a decline in the number of honeybees throughout the world um, and scientists are trying to figure out why this is. But if that happens, there's going to be some implications regarding the food that we can make, especially the fruiting food that we can uh, produce. Insects are also decomposers. They break down organic matter. They help to decompose wood. So here's an example of um, kind of insects. And again, I'll link this in the description. But they're kind of chewing up and breaking down material, helping to decompose things in the world around us. Also decomposing wood. Wood has a material called cellulose, which is very hard to break down. But these termites are able to digest and break down that cellulose. Sadly, some insects do carry disease, things like the West Nile virus. So here's a mosquito slurping up some blood, might have the West Nile virus. Um, some can cause meningitis, some can cause malaria. So here's another, just a picture of a mosquito. Uh, it's got the sucking part, drawing up some blood. Um, as far as entomology, this is a special category of science where we classify and understand the different kinds of insects. We also learned about controlling insects. Um, in the past, we've used pesticides to help control them, but we found that DDT, which is a very harmful substance, can actually pass up a food chain and wind up killing some of these top predators. And so DDT is not being used, so instead we use what are called biological controls. Biological controls would be like sending in a particular wasp to knock out a particular uh, harmful pest. So we bring in some natural predators to eat these little guys that are pests. Uh, in addition, biological controls can cause all kinds of natural interactions. So, for example, the ladybird beetles or Asian lady beetles, you may see these uh, periodically. They were actually brought in to eat aphids, but they have blown out of control, and now there's lots of them all over. And so when you bring in biological controls, once you release it into the environment, it's really hard to get it back. So instead, we use things like physical barriers, um, different planting practices, so the method by which you plant, can help you to reduce the number of pests and then some other simple biological controls instead